Hi, I'm Matthew Boudreau with the Audio Drama Network, and this is Render Rendered. Welcome to Render Rendered from the Audio Drama Network, the show where we teach you post-production audio for your audio drama and audio fiction podcasts. Today, we're going to be working with scene one of episode four of an upcoming show I'm producing called Otherworldlies. Now, the scene is fairly involved, so let's get started. So first thing, I'm always working with my script in the background so I can kind of keep track of what's going on, see if there's missing lines gathering any of the information together right now what we have gathered on the timeline is not timed to any particular thing set with the script nuri hey you is well let's get a look at you girl i guess i ought to see what all the damned fuss is about to carlos you keeping his old crank in line well let's get a look at you girl i guess i ought to see what all the damned fuss is about i hope you're not giving our new friend too much trouble so you can see we kind of got quite a mess of things to work with and, and put together, and that's part of the dialogue editing process. You'll notice that I have a couple of different clips of everyone on the stage. These are different takes of the different scenes. Walters are not broken down into takes yet, and I will show you how to do that. Plus, I'll also show you how to compile takes uh, in a way that it's really easy to edit them in line. So let's get started with that on Nuri's dialogue. So I'm going to solo out Nuri's dialogue just so we can just listen to her and focus in on her. We'll do that for each individual track and then I'll put them together to create timing between them. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to merge these two takes in a way that we can edit them in line. So first we want to find the beginning of Nuri's lines with this first take. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. Now, because we're recorded in studio, you can hear a lot of me talking in the background, a lot of writing what? going on. I'm sorry, what line now are we on? And those are things we're going to edit out in line. Yes. Thank you. I just lost my place. That's all. All right. In the beginning. Tikalos? So, Tikalos, that's her first line. One of my favorite things about Reaper. Other programs have this too, but uh, Reaper has an excellent way of doing it is it uses ripple editing. With the ripple editing off, if I were to split these tracks and delete it, everything would kind of stay in line and you'd have to move this all the way to the beginning of the track and move things around. And, and any tracks in line would not move with the tracks that you delete. So when I hit delete here, you can see that nothing really moves, nothing changes. If I were to move this clip over, this clip over here doesn't move with it. Now with ripple editing per track turned on, which you can engage by clicking here or pressing Alt P on your keyboard. So now you can see that with the ripple editing engaged, when I select this clip and delete it, everything moves to the beginning of the clip or wherever I've set my cursor. To Carlos? And it starts right up with her first line. Now, none of these other tracks below it will move, which allows you to keep editing within this one track without affecting the other tracks. If you do want to move the other tracks to move, say you're aligning the entire show and you're trying to make all your following scenes move with it, then you would click this again until you have the three lines going down, which is ripple editing for all tracks. So now when I ripple edit, what you'll see is this will go away. And anything that's in this line will also be cut away. And everything after that clip will move forward, including the scene markers. Let me scroll out so you can kind of see the scene markers move. And hit delete. And you'll see that the scene moved, the scene marker moved. Everything kind of moved with it. Pecha, the beginning of Pecha's lines got cut away. The beginning of Walther's lines also got cut away. That's not what we want to do in this case, so I'm going to Control-Z to undo that. 
difficult to do by hitting edit undo. And that's ripple editing in Reaper. All right, so the next phase of this is editing one character. And right now we're gonna edit Nuri. I'm going to clean up the edit so that we kind of have the beginning and the end of her takes in line. I want my ripple editing set to per track editing. I'm gonna delete that first part that leads up to her giving her first line to Carlos. To Carlos? And then what I wanna kind of do is I wanna listen through Running through my script, our first line is to Kalos. And we can see that Nuri's last line is this line here, this what did I do, bite it. So that's going to signify the end of Nuri's lines that we're looking for in this scene. So now with that all marked out, we're going to go in and we're going to find her beginning and the end of this scene. <laughs> they, couldn't they couldn't find you a better fella? Married that oaf. It's introduced me to Walter. <laughs> that doesn't sound friendly. Nope. Where are its eyes? Ah! Pacha! I am. Let me go! Uh, uh, I, uh, <sighs> a long time. You mean it's not. Where to go then? Back home. What did I do? Bite it? Is there we go. There's our line. What did I do? What did I do? Bite it? Now, as you're looking through the waveforms, you can kind of get a feel for, you know, when Nuri is speaking. She's directly in front of the microphone, so her line's going to be naturally louder. So you can kind of see where her lines begin and end. And after a while, you kind of get a feel for it, and you'll be able to edit much quicker. So now, again, with my Ripple editing engaged for per track editing, uh, I'm going to just kind of cut off the end of that scene. And then I'm going to come over here and look at our second take and do the same thing there. I want to find the beginning and the end of the take and get it nice and clean and separated out. To Carlos? There's the beginning. what I do? Bite it? Yep, and there's the end line there. what I do? Bite it? Cut off the rest of the line. And then we have two takes of Nuri giving the lines for this first scene. Now, before I move into editing these scenes, I kind of want to line them up so that I can use both takes and take the best performance from each take and create one excellent performance that makes Marissa sound her best. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this second clip here, which is the second take. I'm going to go to edit and cut cut items tracks envelope points ignoring time selection so you can do that or you can hit Control x now if we right click on nuri's first take here you can see we have all these selections that we can do with it we're going to go to take and down here near the bottom of the take menu item is paste to takes and items we're going to click that and you can see what we now have is we have two takes of Nuri. They're not going to be quite lined up. We'll, we're going to take care of that in a moment. But they're set up in such a way that we can kind of listen to one take. To Carlos? Listen to the other take. To Carlos? And we can kind of decide which versions of these lines that we like. Next thing I want to do is kind of normalize these lines. You can see there's a lot where she gets loud near the end. I'm actually going to cut off this part where she gets loud near the end and give it its own track. <coughs> What's in this? Okay, that's her drinking some whiskey. I'm going to cut that out. And basically what we're trying to do is we're just, just trying to get her voice normalized in such a way that we don't have to level everything later quite so much. So we can right click and go to item properties. I'm gonna pull up this media items property and you can hit the normalize button here. You can see it added some DB. You hit the apply button and you can see it brings all of our levels up so they're nice and crisp and loud. Uh, simple keyboard method of doing that 
is I'm going to do that also with so I'm going to select the second take and do that also there. Uh, this time I'm going to use Shift N to get our levels normalized. I'm going to go through and normalize all of these. And that's just going to give us kind of a good baseline to start with. So the next thing I'm going to show you is how to split a clip. When you split a clip, you're creating a division between the two clips, like taking a razor to film in order to splice together uh, and edit. In this case, we want to separate out our lines. To Carlos? And. Carlos? Uh, first thing I want to do is I want to get those two lines kind of adjusted together. So, and as we go down the line, uh, we want the timing to kind of stay similar between the two takes that Marissa gave us. So what we're going to do here is uh, we're going to select our second take. I'm going to press the Alt key. You can see that my cursor changes to have these two double arrowed lines at the end of it. Now, if we move the clip from the second take, you can see it kind of allows us to adjust the take so that they're in line and roughly in the same area. To Carlos? To Carlos? Now again, I like this first more pensive line, so I'm going to select it just after that. In order to split our clip, we're going to click S on the keyboard. And you can see now we have two separate clips. With the clip I want selected, I'll want to lock to this clip. So we're going to right click on the clip, go to take, lock to active take. Now, when I click this bottom take, you can see it doesn't highlight the take, which means it's not changing. To Carlos? And that keeps our takes locked in place where we want them. All right. Thanks for watching Render Rendered. We hope you'll join us next time as we continue this process. In the meantime, remember to record, edit, upload, and repeat.